Hey YouTube, it's the Forest Farmstead. I'm going to talk to you today about how to increase the water pressure inside your home, specifically if you're on a well uh, or spring-fed system. So um, municipal water sources, you can still use a booster pump to increase the water pressure if necessary, um, but this is a little bit different of an application. And for all intents and purposes, I'm going to be focusing on wells as well as spring-fed systems here. So we bought this house about two years ago, uh, and it's a spring-fed system. So when we moved in, um, had this old jet pump over here that you can see, this old stay right jet pump that um, has been here since the house was built back in the 70s. So, I mean, this thing is pretty old. Um, you can see in, you know, a lot of the fittings here, they're just corroded out almost entirely. Some of the fittings you literally couldn't even see through anymore. So this was restricting the water pressure um, a lot to the point where I had my pressure switch set at 3050. So cut on at 30 pounds, turn off at 50 pounds. And um, it hardly could even get up to 50 pounds when it was you know pumping at full capacity. So last summer in about June, I ended up swapping that, that old stay right pump out for this new uh, Gould's J15S pump. So I did quite a bit of research um, and I spoke with you know a number of different companies as well that provided insight, um, specifically Aquascience, definitely need to send a shout out to them for their customer support, um, in addition to RC Worst. So they were integral in answering all my questions, helping me size everything, just making sure that I was you know taking the necessary steps to um, achieve what I wanted to, which was essentially to be able to you know get a higher, more consistent water pressure inside my house. So with this J15S pump, um, it can deliver, I wanna say around 16 gallons per minute at about 70 PSI, which is you know about as, as, as much as I'd wanna push out of this thing. So, um, you know, with a, with a typical setup, a typical um, jet pump and pressure tank setup that you can see right here, what's going to happen is that this pressure switch is going to control when the pump goes on and off. So it essentially, essentially senses how much pressure is in the line uh, and then talks back to the pump and says, okay, it's time to turn on or it's time to turn off. So if we're inside the house taking a shower, for example, um, and the and let's just say that we have a pressure switch that's set at that 4060. So if we had, um, have the water turned on and the, the switch right here senses that the water in the line is before is below 40 pounds, so that includes you know the, the pressure tank over here, this is drained as well, then it'll tell the pump to kick on. And so that pump will then kick on and it'll go up to 60 pounds, um, charge the house, charge the pressure tank over here, and then shut off. So if we still have that water running, then it's going to drain the line again. It's going to go down to 40 pounds. The, the pressure switch is going to tell the pump, hey, it's time to kick, to kick back on. Um, the pump will kick back on, and then it'll go back up to 60 pounds, turn off, back down 40, over and over and over again. So it's constantly cycling this pump on and off, which is not how pumps are necessarily designed to run and function, especially optimally. So... If your pump is, is cycling on and off repeatedly, um, it's it's definitely gonna shorten its lifespan. So they make this, there's a company out there called Cycle Stop Valves, um, and I believe the owner of the company's name is Carrie Austin, and he was very, very helpful um, answering all my questions as well. So I um, need to send out to sh a shout out to Carrie for, for being just so helpful, um, so insightful, and being just so willing to answer all my questions in this process as well. So essentially what I did was um, installed this cycle stop valve, which is a type of, of check valve right here. And um, what this does is it creates just a little bit of back pressure that you can kind of manually set with this screw right here, depending on um, what your pressure switch is set out, as well as how big your pressure tank actually is. So, see if I can find that little piece of paper here. So they'll send you just uh, some information along with the pressure switch, or the, with the cycle stop valve itself. Um, and you can see in here, you know, based on how much your total pressure tank capacity actually is, how much pressure you can set that cycle stop valve to. So you need at least one gallon per minute flowing. Um, and then this will work up to 25 gallons per minute 
So um, if you have a larger tank, for example, then you can set your cycle stop valve to a higher pressure um, and therefore, you know, have higher pressure inside the house as well. So my tank is 116 gallons. So that means definitely on the larger side of what you can get for, um, for pressure tanks. And then because I have this, this high performance jet pump as well, I was actually able to set my my pressure to 67 constant PSI. So what I ended up doing was I put a 50, 70 pressure switch on instead of your you know standard 30, 50 or 40, 60. So the cut in pressure instead was 50 pounds. So once the pressure drops to 50 pounds, um, the pressure switch tells the pump to kick on. And then once it hits 70 pounds, then it tells the pump to kick off. However, because this cycle stop valve is now in line here, creating a couple pounds of back pressure, this is essentially telling the pressure switch that no, the pressure is actually at 67 pounds or you know 68, whatever it is within that two to three, um, two to three pound range. So essentially, it's it's kind of tricking the pressure switch, which is then tricking the pump into thinking that you know it's it hasn't actually hit pressure yet that 70 pounds specifically and it needs to stay on so now if we're inside the house and we're taking a shower um the uh, the pressure will drop down to 50 still so you're still going to have your your differential whatever your pressure switch is set to so with a larger tank you're definitely going to notice it a lot more because it's going to have more capacity so with 116 gallon tank you're using about you know a third of that with actual volume um, so just say, you know, just, just under 40 pounds or 40 gallons of actual water is what this thing can store. So what's happening is we you know we're going, we're taking a shower, for example, um, say that the, uh, the pressure tank is, it's already almost empty. So it doesn't have 40, 40 gallons actually in there. And so we get down to that 50 pound mark and the pressure switch tells the pump to kick on. So the pump kicks on. Um, and normally, again, without this the cycle stop valve, it would turn off at 70 pounds. But because this is creating two to three pounds of back pressure, so again, 67 pounds approximately is is what this is, how much is actually going through there. It's maintaining that. So if we have a faucet on, if we have the shower on, if we have anything, any water source that's on, sprinklers, whatever it is, then the pump is going to stay on at 67 pounds and not shut off at 70 pounds until the water source is actually shut off as well. So what it's doing is it's actually delivering a constant pressure based on your water usage and output as well. So not only is it going to deliver that constant pressure, um, but it's also going to save on your, your electricity as well because the pump is not working at full capacity anymore. So if we're taking um, a shower and we're using, you know, maybe like three and a half, four gallons a minute max, just say, then um, the pump is going to adjust for that. So it's not going to be working at full load amp anymore, um, which for this pump is about 10.7 amps. It's only going to be pumping whatever, you know, necessary output or whatever necessary amperage is required to deliver, you know, three gallons per minute, four gallons per minute, whatever it is that you're actually using. Because again, it's not psych, it's not cycling you know on and off it's not turning um you know on to full full amperage and filling up that that pressure tank in the lines as quickly as it can to 70 pounds and then shutting off again rather it's only coming up to the the set pressure which is for this again this application is 67 pounds it's staying there until that water pressure is turned off or until the water source is turned off and then it comes up to that 70 pounds and the pump turns off from there so you can get a lot smaller pressure tanks um like couple gallon pressure tanks so then you know when you turn on the shower for example and you go through whatever pressure is left in there whatever residual volume and pressure is left in there then you really don't notice that drop so i mean for a shower in a two gallon pressure tank you might notice i mean before it even comes up to temperature it's going to be at the right pressure whereas you know with my setup again having this big old pressure tank it takes you know if it's full anyways it can take 10 minutes for example um, before the, the pump actually kicks on and comes up to seven or 67 pounds and stays there. So there's a few things that you want to consider, um, based on your specific setup. So if you want to save space by not having a big old pressure tank, um, then I would recommend, you know, getting a small pressure tank, something that's only a couple of gallons, maybe like 4.4 gallon capacity, I think, um, is, you know, is, is fairly standard for the smaller ones. Um, 
So then again, you know, you won't notice that pressure drop when you're first turning on whatever water source it is. Um, you know, for me anyways, having this big 116 gallon uh, Gould's pressure tank, I think this is a one, I don't think it says the, the model number on there, but I think it's a 116 V if I remember correctly. Um, this is nice because if my power goes out, then I have 40 gallons on reserve, essentially. So I don't need the pump um, on, turned on anyways, or activated to be able for this, for this pressure tank to actually be able to push the water out still using this bladder in here and charge my house. So um, depending on, you know, again, what your, what your environment is like, if you have frequent power outages and maybe you do want a larger pressure tank unless you have a... Uh, um, a generator, for example, that will turn on automatically and, you know, turn your pumps on as well. That's something that we have issues with over here is just, it's, you know, if the power goes out, our water's out. So we got to, we got to be pretty creative with how we circumvent some of those challenges. Um, but all in all, i um, very satisfied. I mean, I think this thing was like $150, if that, the cycle stop valve. So not very expensive, um, especially for being able to retrofit one of your old pumps, um, and increase the water pressure inside your house extremely easily. And, you know, not only that, but it's also just convenient with the fittings on here. So, I mean, you can fit, um, you know, you can fit a, a gauge on here, you can fit your pressure switch on here, and then you can also have a T for, um, for your pressure tank itself, which I have running off of here. So it's compact, it's, you know, functional, um, and it can turn any old pump you know, into to something a little bit more modern and sleek and effective. So uh, if you have any questions, I would recommend reaching out to Carrie over at Cycle Stop Valves as well. Um, but overall, I could not recommend this thing anymore.